the rich aroma, exotic taste and heady flavor of Indian coffee have its roots here in these plantations that dot the western ghats of South India, the heartland of Indian coffee. The two varieties of Indian coffee, Arabica and Robusta, are widely grown in the traditional coffee growing states of Karnataka, Kerala and Tamil Nadu. These South Indian states account for 90% of the area under plantation and contribute 99% of all coffees produced in the country. Typical to every agricultural enterprise, these tracts that produce some of the world's best shade-grown coffees are also home to pests and debilitating diseases of coffee. Prominent among the pests that affect coffee are white stem borer, berry borer, shot hole borer, nematodes and sucking pests like mealy bugs and green scales. Diseases like leaf rust, black rot and root diseases also result in crop losses. In areas that are ideally suited for growing high quality Arabica, it is imperative to encourage Arabica cultivation and protect this variety from the ravages of pests and diseases. This calls for concerted action as Arabica is more prone to pest infestation with white stem borer being the prime destructor. Xylotrechus quadrupes, the white stem borer. What makes it so lethal to coffee plantations? A member of the Cerambicid beetle family, predominantly wood borers, this insect is a specialist in launching scathing attacks, symptomatic of guerrilla warfare. An intriguing feature of this pest is that the life cycle begins within the plant stem, resulting in ridges and tunnels, culminating with the emergence of the insect through gaping holes often noticed on the bark. White stem borer, the enemy within. Now, the inside story. The white stem borer is a slender beetle measuring one to two centimeters in length with a black body and characteristic white bands on the wings. The female of the species is larger than the male, distinguished by markings on the head and shape of the abdomen tip. Mating is followed by egg laying by the female borer in cracks and crevices on the bark of the coffee stem. The eggs hatch in about a week's time and the young larvae, also known as grub, launch the attack, feeding on the soft green tissue under the bark for about two months, causing permanent ridges on the stem the primary telltale signs of white stem borer infestation. The grub later moves into the hard wood, boring through the stem, creating tunnels in all directions. The grub constantly feeds on the wood for the next several months to complete the five larval stages, systematically devouring the coffee stem before transforming into a pupa. After about a month in the pupal chamber, the pupa emerges as the adult beetle. The adult stays in the tunnel for a week before pushing through the hole in the stem to emerge into the open to start the infestation process all over again. Recent studies have confirmed that the white stem borer population consists of two broods. One brood completing the life cycle in about a year's time and the other in six months. The time of the emergence of the adult beetle is called the flight period. There are two peak flight periods, a short summer flight during April-May and the longer winter flight during October to December. In areas that experience the northeast monsoon like Palnis, Chevroys and in Andhra Pradesh, 
there could be an extension of flight activity during January, February and June-July. While young coffee plants that are 7 to 8 years old succumb to stem borer attack within a year or two, older plants may survive the onslaught for some more time, but the crop suffers resulting in reduced yields. The characteristic symptoms of white stem borer infestation are the external ridges on the stem. Infested plants also show yellowing and wilting of leaves along with poor bean filling. White stem borer attacks the core of the plant, killing productivity, causing crippling crop failure and inflicting economic loss through widespread plant mortality. This calls for replanting of stem borer affected plants, resulting in the additional burden of maintenance costs. Being well adapted to the coffee ecosystem, eradicating white stem borer is not a feasible option presently. The solution lies in effectively managing the pest within threshold levels. Pest infestations and associated problems arise out of a combination of biological, environmental and cultural factors. Hence, an effective management strategy must hinge on an understanding of all aspects of the situation, an integrated approach going beyond the pest and the plant. The most effective strategy is the adoption of integrated pest management practices to restrict the pest population to the lowest threshold by creating unfavorable conditions through a judicious mix of cultural, mechanical and chemical control measures. The environment has a great impact on the activity of the pest. White stem borer prefers bright sunny conditions for flight, mating and laying of eggs, while rainfall and cool shade conditions deter its activity. Thus, the microclimate around the coffee plant can greatly influence pest management activities. Shade management has a vital role in regulating borer incidents in the plantation. A mixed canopy of shade trees provides uniform medium shade required to create light and temperature conditions that are unfavorable for insect activity. This is achieved by a two-tier shade system, a lower canopy of fast-growing temporary shade trees like Dadap and an upper canopy of permanent shade trees, taking care to fill up open patches by planting fast-growing temporary shade trees followed by permanent shade trees. Another facet of white stem borer management is to ensure self-shading of the main stem by the plant canopy. This involves retention of primaries with sufficient foliage to shield the main stem and thick primaries from sunlight by judicious pruning. While performing the centering operation, care should be taken to avoid exposure of the main stem to prevent borer attack. Self-shading of coffee stems is also ensured by sustaining foliage through timely control of leaf rust disease. Leaf rust management using Bordeaux mixture or systemic fungicide helps prevent the disease and retain the foliage. In estates where white stem borer infestation has already set in, it is important to embark on various counter-attack measures immediately. The root of the problem lies in the infested stem. Hence, the first step should be to remove all infested plants by tracing to minimize the pest inoculum. This is done by a set of trained tracers who monitor plant stems across the plantation looking out for ridges and rings on the stem, in addition to keeping an eye on wilting and yellowing leaves. Knives should not be used to detect infestation, as this exposes the stem to other infections. 
Timing the tracing is vital. The operation should be completed before the flight periods by March and September to facilitate removal of infested plants before the adults emerge and create havoc in other plants. The next logical step is to uproot and destroy infested plants. However, all infested plants need not be uprooted if the tunnels have not reached the root. This can be confirmed by stumping or collar pruning at about one foot from the ground. Leaving uprooted infested stems on the estate is dangerous as the pest completes the life cycle and emerges earlier than the regular flight periods. Thus, defeating regular control measures including pesticide application. Hence, destruction of the uprooted and stumped stems by burning is essential to arrest the spread of infestation. However, uprooted stems can be reclaimed for use as fuel only after ensuring complete pest kill by full immersion in water for at least 10 days. Gap filling or planting of coffee plants in open patches created by removal of plants due to stem borer incidents or other reasons is critical to avoid creation of open patches which can become hubs for white stem borer incidents. Further, temporary shade trees like Darap or Glyrosidia should be immediately planted in open patches to protect the young coffee plants. After removing the infested plants, the remaining healthy bushes can be protected from borer attack by bark scrubbing, smoothening to eliminate cracks and crevices. This involves the removal of loose scaly bark using a coir glove, coconut husk or gunny piece, making the stem smoother, thus reducing the chances of egg laying. The most appropriate time for stem scrubbing is before the flight periods, ideally just after the cessation of the southwest monsoon. Stem scrubbing should not be done using knives and other sharp objects as this damages the green tissue resulting in fungal infections. Judicious application of pesticide is yet another weapon to control infestation and is to be restricted to endemic borer areas and open patches. Timing of the operation to match the flight periods is critical as the adult beetle, eggs and early larvae are the main targets. Proper coverage of the main stem and thick primaries with pesticide solution is to be ensured. Using the required quantity of pesticide like chlorpyrifos along with wetting agents. While one round of spray is sufficient during each flight period, during the long winter flight period, an additional round may be needed one month after the first application in blocks with severe infestation. Lime application on the main stem and thick primaries just before the flight periods is effective in case of low infestation levels. Lime application can be used in conjunction with other cultural and mechanical management practices. Another integrated pest management approach, helpful in monitoring and control, is the use of traps baited with synthetic sex pheromone of the male beetle. Currently under final stages of field trials, the pheromone trap attracts mainly the female beetles and also some male beetles, trapping them on a sticky substrate applied on a cross vein. Like any other insect pest, white stem borer is also attacked by a few natural enemies like parasitoids and predators, causing some degree of natural control of the pest. Some of the natural parasitoids of coffee white stem borer encountered in the field are Apnesia sahyadrika, Paralorogus pallidiceps, and 
Aphialux species. The blue barbed bird is a predator of white stem borer, grubs and pupae. The bird extracts late stage larvae and pupae from the stem by pecking at the bark. In an integrated pest management program, adoption of non-chemical measures play an important role in this direction. With integrated pest management, we can surely control white stem borer. The methods that we use for control of white stem borer are optimum shade and uh, regular tracing of borer. With these preventive measures and a total and a community approach, we can surely control white stem borer. Chemical pesticides should not be used indiscriminately so as to avoid pesticide residues in coffee and also prevent environmental pollution. We don't do anything special as such, but uh, we follow uh, general uh, practices that actually have been uh, you know, initiated uh, by the coffee board with, which they have said over the years, where we maintain a lot of um, shade and um, we have a lot of foliage cover on the plants and we don't do any um, um, swabbing or any chemical uh, um, pesticide uh, work. What we do is uh, uh, we trace uh, water throughout the year. We do a very light pruning so that sort of uh, helps our plant uh, retain its foliage and in the initial rains the foliage recovers much more quickly. We do not uh, leave the borer stumps lying around in the spot. No borer stumps are given to workers for firewood purposes. We just do tracing and some, uh, you know, some phytosanitary measures which are done on time. The coffee board is driving major initiatives to effectively tackle the white stem borer problem through research, extension and training activities. Urana Gramasterella Seri Undu Samo Ekawagi, Borer no Control Madlikagi, Pakara Gramagalegu, Betikutu, Avara Sakar no Teget Kundu, Alyosa, Borer Nermulana Karen no Kaget Kundi there. The ICO CFC project to implement integrated pest management practices is a major step in this direction actively involving the planter community in the coffee growing regions of India through various lab to land initiatives. Central Coffee Research Institute